want to get me out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think they want to see me. Um, you left it. You like. Um, yeah. This is this is early for um, TV to start, but you obviously um, start very early at work. Uh, yeah, I'm up at five fifteen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, although I don't tell everyone I'm up at 5.15. I'm not in like some 5.15 club or something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so, how can I help? Right, so the programme we're making, um, it's about how money impacts on people's lives. Yeah. One of, the reason why, one of the reasons why we started kind of looking at this is because um, of the, the kind of lies we tell ourselves about money or like we don't talk about it, one. We don't talk about money to anyone you know it's the yeah. number one to be the people more likely to talk about sexually transmitted diseases apparently than they right. are money. well i'm not um but <laughs> i i did research for my book and yeah more than half of spouses don't know what their partner earns um and yeah more than half marriage is the main reason for breakup is money problems so yeah it, it, i like I want to get the message out to the world that it's okay to talk about money. It's like a problem, isn't it? It's like, if I said to you, how much do you earn? And, you know, do you like money? And do you like buying things? That would be, that would be seen as too forward or a social faux pas or something like that. Yet we can talk about um, Trump and politics and STDs and that's all right. Exactly. <laughs> it is a strange thing, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, like you said, like people are, people are not only lying to... Um, or not, not just lying, but kind of keeping things from their partners, yeah. you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, but also to themselves, like they're kind of burying their head in the sand and not really owning up to things. Yeah, I think? I think that they, um, I think the biggest fear around talking about money is the judgment of society. Like in America, if you talk about what you earn or you did in a sale, they're like, whoa, yeah, hustle, grind, yeah. Um, whereas in England, if we say, hey, I did a £50,000 sale, they'd be like, oh, you're greedy, you're capitalist, etc. Um, and then also, if we admit we're having financial problems, um, you know, that makes us very vulnerable. Uh, and it's almost the same as admitting we have drink or drugs problems. Uh, and, and I think we fear being judged by society in a society where talking about money has not yet been accepted, um, you know, openly in society. Uh, and, and if we can get a better dialogue in society about money and talking about it openly and using it for good means, not just personal means, um, then we can start solving the, you know, the problems we have all the way to the root in schools. You know, we should be teaching people about money management, budgeting, saving, investing. We should be teaching that stuff in school so that they're more self-sufficient when they're young. Um, so yeah, sorry about the dings on Facebook. Um, I can't work out how to turn it off, but yeah. Um, so, what is it I can help you with? Yeah, so we, um, we envisage that you might be one of our experts. Um, I know that when we'd spoken, you thought that was a terrible idea to have a group of financial experts <laughs> kind of with similar backgrounds. Um, yeah, and that could be like putting a load of politicians in a room and, you know, trying to get a, a single result or answer. Yeah. And, you know, this is a work in progress because I know you've done lots of things with um, development projects. Um, so I know you know the process and it is, I guess it's quite frustrating, but at the same time it's also, we're at the stage where Channel 4 has funded us not just kind of, um, not just like a couple of grand to do a kind of couple of, uh, a couple of tasters or anything like that. They've funded us to do a kind of pilot, yeah. which they seem like, they want to get it right, and so whatever we we it's ours to kind of lose, if you know what I mean. We're, we're just we just it's a it's a um, an ongoing uh, discussion with them to get it right. Yeah. As to as to what it, what it is, um, I think what the what we really want to get right is the dynamic, like the the people that are um, are helping. The, the people coming through. I, I, I don't know whether it's going to be like, I, I know I've been talking to people with psychology backgrounds and people who have, you know, very specific, you know, benefit backgrounds. Yeah. Um, but do you think that, I mean, I know that when we spoke, you thought that you could probably do a lot of the financial stuff, all of it, maybe yeah. yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like I said to you, I was £50,000 in consumer debt, credit cards and car loans and all sorts. Um, and I started getting mentors and listening to audio programs and going on courses and self-educating on managing money better. You know, there's so many things you don't realise. There's, you know, like, don't spend when you're emotional, you know, high or low. You, you, you're depressed, you spend. You're elated, you spend. So don't spend when you're emotional. You make better logical decisions. Fundamentals like never spend more than you earn. Know what... Um, Know exactly what you um, have to spend every month. Make a budget. Get rid of all your wasted direct debits. Always price shop. You know, always look for three quotes for everything. You can always get everything a lot cheaper. Always ask for a discount. I don't know if you can see the art behind me, um, Gina. You can definitely see. Um, yeah. But, you know, like this he's one of my favourite artists. I've um, collected from him for seven years. And, and he always does me 500 quid off a three grand piece. Um, and if you don't ask, you don't get. And all this stuff mounts up. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'd probably be, I don't want to pitch to you because if you want me, you want me. And if you don't, that's cool. And I've done a load of pilots, so I'd rather not do another pilot that doesn't go anywhere. But, um, I think I'm well qualified to take someone who's in a lot of debt, sit down with them, dig into all their financial situation, you know, get their massive bills and paperwork out. There'd be direct debits that they've been spending for years that they don't even know about. There'd be a, there'll be a credit card on 30% that could be on 0% for six or 12 months. They'll be paying off their lowest debt first and their highest debt last. They should be paying off their highest debt first and their lowest debt last. Uh, and I think I could get, give them a plan to get out of their situation. Um, they're, they're likely to have some addictions because everybody has a, addictions. Um, and, you know, people who spend more than they earn are likely to have some addictions to material items or to, you know, um, I'll make some generalizations, but you know, gambling or um, shopping, you know, shopping is an addiction for a lot of people or eating or whatever. Um, and just work out those areas where they're wasting a lot of money uh, and um, get them to spend 99% of what they earn, not 120% of what they earn. And then 95%, then 90%, then 80%. Get some really high interest accounts, get some ISAs set up, you know, get some um, invested funds, um, get starting to earn on their money. Go out and do a bit of overtime, um, set up a second part time business, selling all your stuff on eBay or on Amazon, etc. You know, like these are fundamental uh, tips and tricks that anyone can do. And um, I had a drum kit, um, which my wife wanted me to get rid of anyway, because I lived in a um, we lived in like this. I had this bachelor pad, basically. And I thought, yeah, I'd done it all up. It was, you know, had a cinema in it and everything. And um, I, the first night I went out in this bachelor pad, I thought, you know what? I'm not very good at pulling, but I've got this bachelor pad. If I can get someone back, I, I am in. And the first person I ever met, I ended up marrying her. And so like, I never got to use the bachelor pad. She moved in real quick because, you know, like I was what? I guess I was in my mid-20s at the time and I was ready for a relationship. And she's like, mm, this room looks nice. And it was my uh, sort of music studio, drum and guitar. She said, if you sell all of those, I can have my clothes in this room. So I sold my drum kit. I got 700 quid for my drum kit. I got 200 quid for my Marshall amp. I got 100 quid for my guitar, which I was never using. Now, a grand <clears throat> at 5 or 7% a year compounded over 20 or 30 years is a decent amount of money. So, you know, there's all these areas where people can um, get rid of depreciating assets, get rid of expensive debt, and, you know, and turn their life around. Um, and I thought... Initially, I thought the panel was a bad idea if we're all doing the same thing. But I think if you've got someone who's an addiction expert, you know, Russell Brand's re released his book, hasn't he, on addictions. And if you have someone like him who, <clears throat> you know, so I can find out what their financial problems are and then find out, oh, actually, they're, they're, they're spending a third of their wages here. They're addicted to this. And then you pass it to this guy and this guy goes, all right, well, I can help you with the addictions and I can help you with the mindset. Um, yeah, maybe that would work. It's your show, but... <laughs> You know, um, we're, I know that the people, um, when we're doing the format, all these things get fed back to them. And, um, yeah, we just want to get it right. We want to make it something that will help people. And yeah. will make a TV show, obviously. But, uh, um, I think yeah. also, um, like, knowing what to do and doing it are two really different things. Um, and uh, I'm quite well known for giving people a real kick up the arse and making them do what they know. Um, because they're going to need some tough love. They're going to need some nagging. You know, to break any habit, you need that. Um, so, you know, getting yourself down the gym or stop eating bad food. You know, there's all these anchored patterns and, you know, they're going to need help with that. You know, some people spend, what, £40 a day on cigarettes. It's like, imagine, you know, that's what, £280 a week. I mean, it's, 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 you know, 1,100 quid a month. 
I spend £6.20 a day on coffee. So if I made it at home, that might be too. But no, I can afford to spend £6.20 a day. But, you know, if you add that up over a year, what is that? That's a ridiculous amount of money. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you touched on something then as well, because one of the things that we were, um, you know, as I'm talking to people, <clears throat> there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's differences in um, the people that are coming to me. Some people, you know, they openly admit that they, you know, it's their kind of, they, they take responsibility for what they're doing and, um, and they, they want to, want to make changes and things like that but then sometimes because um i'm having people come so there'll be a couple come to me one of them will be a lot more resistive and um not take responsibility it's a good point. for yeah the... it's a good point you might want to do something but your husband or your wife are not bought in so you've got to get both the couple bought in you could, you know like i'm in my living room at the moment um you know you could get a load of bank statements and credit card statements out interviewing a couple and one couple has no idea what the other partner is spending. That would probably make good TV. Um, I would just want the, I would want to get people being honest with each other, which goes back to my why I write my books. Um, you've got to be honest. It's not, it doesn't make you a bad person if you can't manage money very well. And I think we're worried that like, people will judge us and, you know, I'm a really bad person. I'm a complete loser. I can't manage my money very well. People are going to judge me. But the only reason you can't manage money very well is because you've not been taught and you don't know how. And, um, you know, when we realise we're not going to get judged, we just don't know how. If you, you know, if you don't know how to eat well, if you don't know how to exercise well, if you don't know how to invest in property, you don't know because you don't know, not because you're a fool. Um, and I would want to make people feel safe. Um, although, if they're prepared to go on TV, then, you know, in front of millions of people, then, you know, that's probably the biggest catharsis for them. That's probably the biggest gift for them. Because if they're prepared to admit it in front of a million people or however many people you have watching, then, you know, ironically, it's probably harder to admit it to their wife um, or husband. But yeah, getting honest with each other and sharing the, you know, the problems and wanting to help each other with the problems. I'm good friends with Gerald Ratner and he was making hundreds of millions and turning over billions and then he lost it all. And um, that must have been humbling for him with his wife and he got quite depressed. He used to watch Countdown every day and just sit in his pyjamas. And after seven years, his wife said, look, you've got to get out and start again. I believe in you, but if you don't get out and start again, we're getting a divorce. She kicked him out of the house. And now his business is worth 35 million again. So, you know, like you can turn it around. Yeah. And, and you probably need someone to go, stop wallowing, pick yourself up. Yeah. Well, I think you need a balance. You need someone to go, it's okay. You're not a loser. We, we all have problems. You know, like we're not judging you. We just need to get you to get better knowledge and then <laughs> kick up the arse when they're procrastinating, faffing, falling back into patterns, etc. So it's, it's, it's a bit of support and tough love at the same time. I think we, different people need different sort of amounts of that. Some people you can be very direct, direct with, some people you need to be more supportive with. Yeah, absolutely. Right, I know you're busy. I think I've got everything. And, All right, um, so what's the next step here? We, <clears throat> we've got a meeting with the commissioner, um, Michelle Chappell. Okay. Do you, so she's Channel 4 Documentaries. Right. Um, this um, is this series they're looking to put in the kind of 8 o'clock Channel 4 slot. Okay. Um, have you done any pilots for Channel 4 before? Yeah, probably about 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done loads of pilots. I'm the pilot guru. I'm the most famous, non-famous person in the whole world. <laughs> I just get used by TV companies to do a load of pilots and then say, yeah, we want someone like him, but not him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to bring all my baggage onto you, Sheena. I did do a TV show called Get a Life in 2006. Um, it was actually prime time on Living for the first few shows, so you could probably dig that out. Um, yeah, and I've done random bits on media, uh, media news channels, etc. But that's the only sort of full-on TV show I've done. Um, well, honestly, like I have, I've shown your video to my executive, um, and she loves you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, when I'm not, I'm not looking for anyone that's like you, but not you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I know it's frustrating. And I can hey, look, it's all right. It's, it's all, that. it's all part of the journey. Yeah. My friend Yanni had that the same amount as me, and then he got his um, 20 episode TV show on Dave. So um, yeah, you know, it's all right. I wouldn't be talking to you if I was, um, you know, if I hadn't exercised it in my mind. Um, but yeah, look, hey, look, if it helps you, this is great. And if it goes somewhere, 
this is also great. You know, I've got a, I am have just set up a foundation. Obviously, I've written my book, Money. I've um, I've got a mission to help as many people across the globe get better better financial education, especially young people and underprivileged people. Um, you know, and I've been helping hundreds of thousands of people now manage their money better. So, um, you know, I'd I'd be open to the opportunity if you're if the big bosses uh, think I'm a good fit. You when you say you've been helping people manage their money better, because I know you were doing property. So, are you working like with people trying to? Yeah. 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 So I have I have a company called Progressive Property, which is the biggest property training company in the UK. I'm a business partner. So you know we we have about four hundred thousand people. Uh, if so, in fact, I'll take that back because that's, that's both companies. We have about two hundred eighty thousand people that subscribe to our newsletters and follow our work. Um, and yeah, we help people even without money get into property, get a second home, get a buy to let investment. Um, yeah, and then obviously my books. Um, my, one of my books just got translated into Russian. Um, there, there's a lot of sort of Far Eastern countries it's been translated into. And then my podcast, A Disruptive Entrepreneur, has 1.2 million subscribers. Uh, and I do a lot about money um, on the podcast. You know, like, it's not just about money. It's about um, managing yourself, managing your emotions, uh, being pla well planned, having a good budgeting system, having good strategies. You know, when you get money in, the smartest thing to do is to get it out into all your savings accounts before you can touch it. Because if you give me a load of money, I can't help but touch it. I love spending money. Um, so it's about money management, bank account management, systems, processes, direct debits and all that stuff, as well as the sort of, um, you know, the how to make money stuff and then the mindset stuff. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. So our meeting next week is on Wednesday. Um, and I know the team aren't back until Thursday afternoon. So I don't know if it'll be Friday before hey, I look, see them. It's fine. Um, but it'll be... Uh, if, if not Friday before then, so I'll give you a call. Okay. Have a lovely day. Have, and you. Thanks, Sheena. Right, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right. Thanks for tuning in. That was an interview with Channel 4 for some apparently big um, finance show helping people who are in debt get out of debt. Um, I've done dozens of these pilots and um, only a few have come to big or bigger TV shows. I just thought that'd be a different kind of live feed today, something different and interesting. There you go. I don't think she knew we were live feeding, but hey, I'm sure it's all right. Have a great day, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.